All right. So this one, I think, is probably one of the more challenging ones that we've seen. Um, we can tell that there's something going on in the dermis. We can see that there is that um, epidermal indu induction a little bit. Yeah, very good. Um, and it's just this. So, these are intracellular. Yep. And there's a proliferation of cells, but um, this would definitely be something that, that has a differential it's not um, like others that we've seen so um, we could go through the busy dermis differential um, and look at and start to think about a bunch of things like a spitz nevis a blue nevis um, a granuloma annulare neurofibroma and then we're still going to consider dermatofibroma here. very good yes very good this is that like what i think of as kind of the atrophic form of dermatofibroma that is really light on the spindle cells and has a lot of collagen in it. And at first glance, you might think, well, that's just normal dermis, but it takes a little practice. But when you compare this to normal dermis, the collagen pattern is very different here. And there's more cells than normal for the dermis. Also a little bit more vessels too, in this case. So um, we don't have any normal dermis next to it to see, but that's helpful when you compare this, because at first glance, because the whole specimen has this look in the dermis, it can kind of trick you into thinking, oh, you focus on the epidermis and you think the dermis is not the issue. And that's an easy mistake to make when you're starting out in derm path. And it's it's easy when you've got an excision and you can see this is very different from the surrounding. But when you've got a punch or a shave where the whole dermis looks this way, it, it, first it's just like, oh, the dermis is pink. The issue is the epidermis. So um, learning the dermal changes is a subtlety. But you're right that these cells, the trickling kind of, of cells between collagen and a little bit of wrapping is kind of like what you can see in interstitial granuloma annulare or hypopigmented blue nevus, which I think can look very similar it, at, at certain areas, can look very similar to this lesion, which is dermatofibroma. One of the best clues to this form of dermatofibroma is if you see the epidermal changes, the hyperplasia, the elongated, flattened, blunted, tabled, reedy, the basaloid follicular induction change, all of that. And when you start to see some mucinous stroma and clefting, you can even begin to wonder, could we be dealing with actual basal cell carcinoma for testing purposes? And usually in real life, if you think you see basal cell carcinoma over a DF, it's probably just induction change. I have seen a few examples of true bona fide basal cell carcinoma arising over a DF. Um, and so it does happen, but it's pretty rare. But in, in general, if you think it's a basal cell plus DF, it's probably just DF. Um, and helpful clues can be, look, it, up here, Although there is a little split, you can see a little tiny papillary mesenchymal body starting to develop. Another one here, a little hair papilla. Sometimes you can see little inner root sheath trichohyaline granules. So things like that. So this, this form of DF uh, tricks people. A lot of times people want to think that this is scar too, because it's kind of cellular and fibrotic like a scar, but it's not as parallel as a scar usually is. And again, the epidermal change can be helpful. Great.